as you can see here, mob spawn 01, mob spawn 02, and then it's going to order it to move to its next spot, which I also passed in, so it's different. Um, some waves, some lanes, like I showed, can go all the way to the end, but some have to go to intermediate spots and then have to get reordered, as you can see by these triggers here. Like if you can see this trigger here, if any unit comes within four of order spot left, it's going to order it to go to order spot left two, as long as that's a hostile or neutral unit. Um, so back here, and then it modifies the amount minus one, and then it waits a bit, and then it'll. So this thing will run 25 times and create 25 units that'll be ordered to come out. So it kind of makes them not like in if you remember in Warcraft 3 in tower defense mall games they would all spawn at once in one big square and just all move um, this spawning system here will make 25 progressively that come out every point every point four seconds that uh, that it can spawn until this hits zero uh, so for boss waves this would only one run, run once and for regular waves it would run 25 times because I, spec I, I set it to be 25 here um, I hope that makes sense. And then when a unit dies, um, make sure that the user killed it. Make sure that it's a hostile unit that died. Modify the kill, set the leaderboard, and then here is a huge um, series of actions that deal with um, giving everybody on the team if it's a boss wave. So I check if the dying unit was massive, required. And if it's team mode, then I give everybody um, a certain amount of mineral Minerals based on the mineral cost of the boss, so I actually set that in the data for the boss. Um, and if it's team mode, I need to give it to certain players. I mean, if it's left versus right, I give it to certain players um, that are on the same side. So that's just that's just a nice feature to have, so that people on the same side can get. If you know, you know, in tower defenses, when one guy works on the boss ninety percent of his life, and then the last guy gets the actual kill, and it's not really fair. So. I implemented this thing here, which you can look at, which will take care of that and give everybody on the team a bit of money when the boss dies. And then if the number of living units is zero um, for player 15, then we're going to start a secret end of round timer, which is a hidden timer. And the reason I'm doing this is because if you have area of effect uh, damage that kills five units at once, it'll actually bug out your end of round, your end of round trigger uh, to run like five times. So if you start a timer when the unit dies, if that timer is already running, it's going to get restarted. And so it'll prevent end of round from running. So it's going to be a one second timer um, that starts. So if five units die, they'd all start this timer. And then when the timer expires, you run you run end of round. So if five units died, it, only, it would only run this once, which is nice. And as a backup, I use this enter critical section, meaning this can't be run by multiple things at once. Um, so inside the critical section, Set the wave running to equal false because the end of round's over. And by the way, lose lives. Um, this is pretty basic. If T mode's true, whenever a unit enters the end regions, etc., it does this. If the lives is less less than zero, or, or I mean, it displays when the li how much life is lost, which side it was for. Um, if it's left versus right. If lives less than zero, pause all the units and game in defeat. But if it's uh, if it's left versus right, you want the other side to keep playing, so I do certain stuff, like let I let them keep going, turn L on to equal false, and remember back in spawn units, if L on is false, it's not going to make the units. So if right wins, L on gets set to false, and these units don't spawn for the left side, and right side can keep playing. Um, and anyways, lose lives will also, will also do a check that the number of living units is zero, and it'll also try and run the secret end of round timer. So things that could end the round are units dying or units going to the end point and both of those will try and trigger an end of round and if it does happen to if it does happen to be um, number of units is less than or equal to zero it will run this timer and one second later end of round will get triggered we do a bunch I enable the cell tower ability back display the wave whatever complete um, if the, if it's the last wave then I can defeat in victory or whichever and then I start the new Wave X wave coming in 20 seconds. Add some bonus minerals based on your uh, based on your player spot. Um, the end players get more. And then of course on wave 10, 20, and 30, I add one Vespine, and Vespine is used to actually upgrade your towers. So um, you can see actually on the builder on the builder command card, I had I had these things upgrade mall towers, upgrade so you can actually upgrade damage. And it'll increase the uh, damage. I you can see I made some upgrades here. Yeah, it does this, so it'll increase the uh, damage by 1.1, so 10% for all of them. 
And uh, yeah, so that, let's go back to triggers. So it'll give them a Vespine and the cost, the cost of doing the, uh, where is it, uh, upgrade tower researches. Um, the cost of, you can see them here, the cost in here is set to one, uh, one Vespine. Um, so anyways, end of round, and also end of round, we'll do a bank save. So it saves whatever wave you're on as long as it's greater than whatever you have in your bank right now. Um, this is pretty simple. This is where basically your bank gets updated. Um, and very poor, very poor anti-cheat here. So don't use this as a model, just use it as a base of what you're going to do. Now the anti-block. So the way I do this is um, whenever construction progress is started for a building, I check that the um, controller is a user. And then for player 1 and 5, I can check the same area um, because the pathing cost between mob spawn 0, 1 and final order left spot is this thing here, this line here. So that can work for player 1 and 5. Um, so I check that the pathing cost, if it's equal to 65, 5, 3, 6, which means, it's, which, means you, which means that there's no way impossible for a unit to get from here to here, um, a unit of radius 0, keep that in mind. Um, and we check that the built the so here's how we check that it's for one and five we check that the unit being built is in p1 build area or p5 build area and if i switch to regions you can see that there's p1 build area there's p5 build area so um i check that the built unit is in there and then i check that um the pathing cost is this insane amount which it's always this amount if they can't get to that unit um that spot and then it just says you blocked it, it i add back their minerals and then i remove their unit so right when they build the block in a blocking spot, it'll just remove it right away and display this. And then it will reorder any nearby units in case they manage to block. Um, this is just a security measure. And then player two is a lot simpler. We just check that the, your, the built unit is in player two, check that the pathing cost between mob spawn zero, two and final order spot left. And do the same thing and do that for all of them. That's basically it. Cell tower, pretty simple. This just gives you your money back. The actual cell tower ability is based on the bunker salvage, which just suicides your building. Um, prevent cross build. If you type dash kill and wave is not running, um, the reason I do this is just to prevent people from doing the stupid blocking trick. Um, I, um, so if it, the wave isn't running and they type dash kill, it's going to pick any units in this player's build region owned by any player, and then it checks, does another if then else here. For each, of the, for each unit it finds in your build area, it's going to check that the and make sure that it's uh, you can make sure that it's structure if you put required structure here. Um, it's going to check that the owner of this found unit is not equal to the triggering player, the player who typed dash kill. And if so, it's going to sell the tower. So it means that somebody else's unit is in your area. It's going to sell it. And um, that's basically it for that. And this make pathing lights is actually something that um, I implemented for fun that people seem to like. Um, whenever you build, whenever you build towers, you'll see the little light markers go through, go through your maze and then run down to the end. And that's actually an invisible unit um, being spawned that periodically makes a, a light doodad at at its uh, at its origin as it runs. So, anyways, let's see here. So if you built, whenever your construction progress is completed for a building or cell, as you can see here. So whenever you build or sell, checks that if the built unit is in player one's build area, it's going to make pathing lights from this point to this point. Um, and as you can see, uh, let's see, yeah, it's going to make make it from here to here with this index. So there's four indexes: one, two, three, four. It's four different areas. So player one happens to be index zero because that's the first sort of path. Um, so whenever player uh, player one builds it's going to make the pathing lights and what make the pathing lights does is that well first it makes sure that something isn't already running if pathing is already being run like the little light markers then it removes it sets it to true whatever so this gets called now because it's running and then it's going to destroy all any markers that are already on the map um, as you can see I had to make a huge variable here because there's four there's four lanes that the markers get run through and they each can have up to 350 lights, which seems huge, but doesn't seem to cause any trouble. So that's okay. So then it'll remove all of them potentially. And then it does some basic stuff, makes the unit, um, sets it, and then sets the opacity to zero so the unit's invisible, 
set no minimap visibility for it, set the unit as running to true, and then it orders it to move, targeting point B, which we passed in to be the final order spot. And then it does a repeated a repeated while thing like a million times or uh, whichever. So, like it creates a little light light types which I specified in set variables if you remember. So if you're on light types wave zero here, it's going to be green lights, orange lights, blue lights, red lights, or something like that, just so it's differentiated. Um, it sets it in this. The reason I have to have this giant uh, array here is because there's no way to just get get a certain amount of actors. Um, and doodads are just actors, so I have to store each one in that giant array, and then store it. Um, set the index, whatever count. Set the count to plus one, and then basically order your guy. Make sure that you're not all greater than 349, which is the size here. And then wait 0 0.08 seconds, and this will get run again. So every 0 0.08 seconds, as your guy, as the invisible unit moves, it drops a light on him, and then it uh, ma makes it look like your maze has a little markers going through it, which is nice. And if that didn't make sense, you can go ahead and look through this. Um, it's a pretty cool thing. I think it's copy-pasteable as long as you change a few things into your map. Uh, I don't use that. And anti-stuck, um, it's just if you type dash stuck, it finds all units in the entire map owned by player 15. If their order at index 0 is no order, meaning they're just sitting still, then it's going to order them to move to their, to their end spot based on what side they're on. This calculates what side they're on. Um, uh, I think that's bank tower money. The bank tower attacks and um, it gets bonus money, as you can see here. And it displays a little text tag above it saying the dollar sign. Um, I think that's pretty much it to this tower defense. I mean, I know it's a lot of stuff to absorb. I mean, and I didn't I didn't show the upgrades or the requirements. You can look at this. Um, but the key here is that all these subtle little things like anti-block and all that would have taken far too long to do in a giant tower defense tutorial. So. I hope by explaining this, um, people understand like how I made this t how I made this tower defense. And by all means, take anything from it. Um, open the map, do whatever you want. Um, I tried to make things as clean as possible so they make sense. Um, a lot of the left versus right stuff does make this look kind of confusing, but it is not th that confusing really if you just read through it. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead and try it out and. Um, I hope my explanation was good because I know stuff like this is pretty pretty crazy to look at right now, but I mean, all it is is making a unit, an invisible unit, and dropping a light at it every 0 0.08 seconds. And this, all this stuff is just to prevent any sort of bugs from happening that, that I did discover. So uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope to get more tutorials out soon. Um, I have been kind of slow. I've been kind of busy because, as we all know, making maps and... Uh, stuff like that doesn't exactly make money but um, it is fun so I'll try to keep it up and thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later